Hey guys, welcome back to Pass Money Plan. I'm Alex. That's Kirby. Today we're going to be not reacting, but talking about this topic right up here. This is from an article. I will post the link down below, but um, this is an important point. And Kirby, I know you have a lot more experience with this. I don't have any kids, but um, I already, I've seen Kirby's kid and, you know, he's already... <laughs> telling everyone Kirby's a billionaire. So, you know, he's already, he already knows about money. So, which is a good thing. I mean, I think it's, it's crazy to see um, just like even the, just the stories you tell me, like seeing a kid that young already thinking about money and talking about money in a sensible way. You know, you always hear kids, you know, making, you know, remarks about money or whatever, but like to understand and start to really learn about finances and stuff and he's cheaper than me that's the best thing you don't even spend right. nothing <laughs> right so, um, yeah yeah go ahead go ahead yeah no yeah uh so i mean it started back it, st it started for me and i didn't know it was i didn't know it was odd till i got older um my mom my mom growing up my mom always, you know, talked about, you know, the financial situation in the house, you know, everywhere I was young. I mean, of course, we didn't live, live the greatest life, but she always talked about the financial aspects. I mean, I'm not saying she's a scholar in finance or nothing like that, but she talked about the different, um, the different levels and different things that was going on, you know, light bills do this, yada, yada, yada. So for that part, I want to salute her for it because that's the first thing that got me intrigued. That's the first thing that made me realize I ain't want to be an adult. And I was like, wait, y'all working all this? You got to pay these bills? I don't want no part of that life. I wanted to stay in my teens forever. Hey, she can go pay the bills. I can sit here in my drawers and watch, you know, MacGyver or whatever the heck I was watching at 18. That's what I was watching. I know you don't know what those is. You that's, Those predate your existence. But that's what that's what it was. And, and, you know, learning, seeing the hardships that she went through and things like that, it... I use it for information. I didn't use it for, oh, well, I guess that's just how life is. I didn't do that. That's because that's what most kids do is, oh, I guess this is how life is. Sometimes bills come and then, you know, we work and then sometimes, you know, you lay on bills and stuff like that. I always used it as our information, information. No matter what she was telling me, good, bad, or indifferent, I always used it as information that I was trying to go to. And the one thing that Warren Buffett say, and we talk about it in, you know, our Saturday class is, the part in the article that CNBC posted, and I want to make sure I give a shout out to CNBC to cite the source of the article. Um, he said, sometimes parents wait until their kids are in their team before they talk about managing money. When when they could be starting when their kids, when their kids are in preschool. And that's the truth. And that's true. And I think Warren Buffett's a little off base here by saying that parents talk to kids in their teens about money management. I don't even think it's then. I don't think they start talking to kids about money management until the kid is, for the most part, already out of the house or leaving the house. Or right before they're about to walk out the house after the parents probably kicked them out and said, oh, well, make sure you manage. This is how you manage your bills. So 18 years, they had no clue of what the hell this was. And then we drop them off into the world and say, oh, you're an adult now. So... Like you were saying with my son, I mean, ever since birth, I mean, we had we had different crazy rules in the house, like literally in my house. Finance or financial topics is the number one subject in my house. And we don't hide nothing from. You know, my son that's in the house, I don't hide nothing from him. If he asks me a question, what's this, what's that we talk about it. I mean, of course, now we in a digital age where bills come online and. You know, it's not like back when I was younger where, you know, they came in the mail, but we talk about it. I mean, even now, I mean, ever since he was born, it's always the rule in the house is if you have money in your wallet, then it always goes to, you know, my son. Still to this day, it's the same. My son, you see, I mean, he now he he knows the rules. So come in the house, he looking through the wallet like, oh, I got it. And then he'll just go put it in his bank. But my <laughs> son, he, he understands OPM, unlike... Unlike nobody else, OPM, other people's money. So everybody that comes over, grandparents, you know, relatives, friends, they give him money. He gets the money and run it and put it right in his bank. And then in the next sentence, he'll be like, okay, let's go get some ice cream. And he he is he wants somebody else to pay for it. 
I know that money. I gotta save that money. I don't know. I can't. I can't go spend that. We need. We need money from somebody else to uh, make this happen. <laughs> but but that's the thing. And and like people come over, come over for a few people that do come to my house. They look at us weird because in their household, money is not even a subject that they will ever even bring up, let alone around kids. But we talk about money and finances like it's the normal everyday topics like other people talk about in the house. I don't know what other people talk in the house, but it's just normal conversation. It's no, I mean, yeah, me and my wife is in business together and stuff like that. But on top of that, we're talking about personal finance. We're talking about business finances. We're talking about rental property finances. We're talking about economic situations or why this thing happened. Um, you know, why, I mean, we even drive around. When we drive around to looking at business, we looking at business models of these businesses. We're looking at what's driving customers, the advertisement. We that's Those are the conversations we have in our house. And, but we do it to make it normal. To make it normal, because money should not be a taboo topic in a house. And that is where I think that it's a big drop off from parents to kids that make them very financially illiterate once they move out. But Alice, go ahead. Yeah, it's an important one. I, I didn't grow up talking about money really either. And so, you know, it took me just, I mean, it just took me asking questions, you know, questioning everything, you know, why. Are there some people that are owners or are there some that are workers? But I never, you know, never had that talk of, uh, you know, about anything regarding money. I thought money was just to pay bills and then having have a savings. But then, you know, at one point I was like, how are there rich people when, you know, I'm doing the math. I can't even save to a million dollars for another 40 years, you know. So how are there people with billions? You know, it didn't make sense. And, um you know, those, those conversations, I can already see like teaching a kid, uh, from a very young age, how they will have that head start. And, uh, there's a, there's a guy on, um, on another guy on YouTube, JJ Buckner. Um, he, he talks to his kids and, um, about finance and dividend stocks and all that stuff. And you can see that, you know, the kids pick up on it, you know, just as a kid. And I hear this too. People say, oh, they're just, they're only five, they're only six. Why would you expect them to understand that? They understand how to read and write from a young age. They understand how to add and subtract. I'm pretty sure they have the mental capability to start learning finances as well. People just don't want to talk about it. And I, I really think that's an important one to discuss because they will be so ahead of, ahead of the game by the time they do walk out the house that you know you won't have to worry about your kid going into debt and stuff like that but i i i think it should be taught from right and like my son my son's just turned nine and he's already buying stocks and we go through we go through it of course it's not i'm not sitting here breaking down a pythagorean theorem to him or nothing like that or i'm right. not teaching him how to sell options or nothing like that but talking about the fundamentals of business of what makes it investable is something that you could talk about. And you just break it down into, you know, elementary school language to give an idea. Like every stock that he buys, it's a stock of his choice. But what we do is we bring what he, what he, his ideas to the table. And then we figure out together where is the best place to invest the stock. And then once we, he comes up with that decision, we talk about the pros and the cons of it. And then when he wants to do it, now if he just come out of left field and say something crazy, then I'm be like, no, but I want him to see with the money that he has, the little money that he has, that, okay, it's okay to take risks. It's fine and dandy to take risks. I mean, three, dollars $400, if he puts it in a stock and it goes to zero, I mean, of course, I'm not going to let him go blind, but if it goes zero, this is the time that he's able to make mistakes. When he has a net, because, you know, me and his mom is, you know, taking care of all his necessities and everything like that, and it's a stream high ice cream bill. So we taking care of that. So him using his money to learn how it works, even if he makes mistakes and makes errors and he get into some stock that, that, you know, bankrupt, I mean, that go bankrupt. Okay, so what? The life is not over. He still has his other investments for the future. Like, of course, investing in, you know, index stock mutual funds, SPY, the Qs and things of that nature. But I want him to know, I want to be 100% sure the day he walks out of the house. And of course, I will always be a sounding board for him. I will always be somebody he can call, even though the times in the future when he get upset at me for being a hard ass. 
But I want to know, even if I don't talk to him and we have, you know, one of those knockout, drag out arguments, I'm stubborn. So it, it'll probably come. He know how to take care of himself. He know how to take care of himself financially. I'm not oblivious to the fact that majority of the kids won't know it. I mean, my generation, 99% of the kids didn't know it. I mean, I go back to the story about my mom talking about finances. I had two other brothers. She talked about it. She talked about it, you know, her understanding of it, but my brothers didn't gravitate to it like I did. So now as they get older in life, they're starting to learn those lessons that she talked about way back then. Me, I always, and I tell you this all the time, you don't have to make a mistake to learn from it. Learn from other people's mistakes so you don't make the same one. So those are the things, but parents need to have those conversations with their kids early, often, and as much as possible. Because you never know, one day you might end up and you're not here. You know, you die, then you left to, who's going to teach them after that? So I rather I rather them be informed than be uninformed. Right, and I think it's also just every form of uh, money too, including taxes. I can remember, um, being fifteen or sixteen, and my stepdad had had showed me how he was working overtime, making less money because of taxes, because it put him into a different tax bracket. And that was like something I couldn't, you know, understand. I'm like, why would you, work? you know? And he's like, well, I can't just say that I'm not going to go into work just because I'm going to get less money. But, you know, things like that too. I mean, taxes is a big one too. And, you know, investing in rather than just saving your money. But I see most families there, as you say, Kids watch what you do. They don't listen to what you say. And so just reflecting on my childhood, seeing how when money came in, it went to new appliances, uh, not brand new, but newer vehicles. Um, it went to maybe education. Um, but in reality, where is the upcome on that? You know, where where is how is that setting up a foundation for your generations to come with all that being said, guys, I'll close it out there. I don't know if you got more, but no, nope, you're good. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.